ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯ ಸೋ ಮಾಸಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾಜ್ಯೋತಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮೃತಂಗಮಯ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತಿ ಲೆಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಫರ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ದಿ ಇಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಕಾರ್ನೇಟ್ let us pray to him to lead us from unreal to the real to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality today's topic i am speaking the influence of thought it is very important to know how thought influences us how it is very important to think always good thought is a tremendous force so whatever we think we act and then we become good or bad in accordance with what we think good or bad Swami Vivekananda has defined thought as a force it's a tremendous force as is gravitation or repulsion when he was talking about raj yoga explaining the aphorisms the aphorism says chitta vritti yoga yoga chitta vritti nirodha explaining that sutra swami vivekananda said from the infinite storehouse of force in nature the mind stuff called chitta takes hold of some absorbs it and sends it out as thought that force is supplied to us how through food and out of that food the body obtains the power of motion 
etc so the thought has got such tremendous effect it shapes our lives to a considerable considerable extent it influences the lives of others but its working is not easily visible they are underneath the surface in our busy life we are unconscious of its powers it is the motive power which drives the machine of body and senses all our activities are preceded by thought first one thinks and then he acts so an act is the outer manifestation of inner thought therefore thought controls all our actions if thoughts are disorganized we are disorganized accomplishment of great works needs great thoughts that's why mahatmas always say think about the divine all the time that is a way to purify ourselves that's the way to discipline our disturbing thoughts thought itself is a motion and it has distinct vibrations these vibrations go forth and spread like fine particles they are not confined to space and time they live and travel far the modern medical technology has found fantastic facts about how thoughts affect the body the pervasive effect of cheerfulness or depression on all beings is self evident probably you might have read swami abhedananda's works science of psychic phenomena there the swami narrates an incident an experiment was made upon a healthy young man who was going to his job in the morning six of his friends they discussed among themselves to give a suggestion to this young man's mind without letting him know that they were doing it just they wanted to make an experiment so as usual the young man started out of his home it was all pre-planned all the six friends of him are standing different places on his way to the office one of his friends who was standing at the street corner looked at him 
and said, How are you? Why you look very sick? What's the matter? Did anything happen to you? How strange you look today. Are you sick? So repeatedly in different, different ways, that friend is uh, telling this way, the young man who did not know anything, he just replied, No, I am quite, quite all right, I am okay. No trouble with me, everything is all right. Then he went further, after some distance, his other friends also met him at different places. They all said the same thing. Of course, in different, different words, they are putting the same idea, telling him repeatedly, it seems you are not well. You look very strange. You look sick. So when all these friends are telling him, it got into his nerves. On reaching the office, the young man began to think within himself, I don't feel very well now. What's the matter with me? All my friends say, I am sick. I must be sick. After a few hours, he began to feel the effect and was convinced that he was sick with high fever. So he came back home, laid on the bed and called in a doctor. The doctor came. All these things happened. The young man suffered for a time. All this suffering is because of the expressions made by his friends. The effect of those suggestions. Next day, it was disclosed to him by his own friends that it was all a joke. So, see that. How it affects a person tremendously. So, you must always tell good things. Greet him well. Even if it doesn't look well, don't say on his face, you are looking very bad today. Don't talk like that. Either positive or negative thought sometimes works miracles on the human body and mind. Even plants and animals respond to the power of thoughts. All these things have been experimented and concluded that thought is a tremendous force. You must understand it, then you will see the miracle of it. When some persons come close to us, we feel repulsive. On the contrary, some others generate good feelings of attraction towards them. You feel pleased if some people come close to you. Though these two categories of people, they may not be known to you at all, yet you feel mysterious liking or disliking for them. The reason is, some persons 
on account of their bad tendencies are surrounded by inimical vibrations the result of their unhealthy thoughts whereas good persons radiate beneficial and friendly vibrations that is why we always tell look have holy association whenever you see you go to a person who is really holy you feel immense peacefulness even without talking just by lying near him it is a common experience every person is to some degree sensitive to these thought vibrations in others and he is vaguely aware of the dominant features of their character either good or bad for the same reason people do not like to stay in some places for any length of time while to some other, some other places they are drawn again and again that means places to have their pure and impure psychic environments which directly act upon the minds either positively or negatively so what does it mean a place becomes holy or unholy depending on the thought currents of the people who live there that's why if you go to a night club where all the vibrations are disturbing if you go to a restaurant you got the vibrations of eatables busy marketplaces luxurious buildings where there is lot of display of wealth they don't soothe the nerves nor bring one peace of mind or tranquility but on the contrary suppose you go to a serene place a semi dark cave or a humble cottage of a holy man or even the home of an unpretentious devotee of the lord you feel inexplainable peace and joy so thoughts are powerful enough to spawn an ocean of change in our environment our thoughts change the environment and they in turn act upon us thought therefore is a potent instrument it is like nuclear energy either you can use it for the welfare of the humanity or misuse it to bring about the mass destruction in complete acts of vivekananda Swami Vivekananda has given a lucid rationale behind the existence of temples and churches every day of our lives Swami ji says we throw out a mass of good or evil and everywhere we go the atmosphere is full of these materials that's how there came to the human mind unconsciously the idea of building temples and churches why should man build churches in which to worship god 
why not worship him anywhere? Even if he did not know the reason, man found that the place where people worshipped God became full of psychic impressions. Everyday people go there and the more they go, the holier they get and the holier the place becomes. One of the direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna, Swami Shivanandaji, used to say to all the monastic members, he said, always meditate in the chapel. All the monastics should come there, sit down and do some meditation. That way, the atmosphere is well preserved. If any man has not much sattva in him, goes there, the place will influence him and arouse his sattva quality. Here therefore is the significance of all temples and holy places. But you must remember, that their holiness depends on holy people congregating there. If going to temple, people make politics and make noise and does not use the place in a way it should be used, then it will have no effect at all. So it depends upon how, how all the people think about in a particular place. That makes the place holy or unholy. So this is the rationale behind all sacred places and shrines where people go to spend time in that purifying atmosphere. In Narada Bhakti Sutra there is a famous sutra there, Tirthani Tirthi Kurvanti. Places become holy on account of the holy people. Holy people make the places holy. A place becomes sanctified by the vibrations of pure thoughts of many people or it becomes holy when a great saint lived and touched the feet of God. We find now how Sri Ramakrishna worshipped Mother Kali at Dakshineshwar in Calcutta. Now it is most sacred pilgrim center. As soon as you go there and particularly when you go and sit in the shrine and go to the room where Sri Ramakrishna lived, you find a remarkable peace of mind. One holy man, his name was Ram Das, a great saint. He would always repeat Rama's name, all the time, wherever he may be, whatever he may be doing, he would always think of Rama, Rama. Of course, probably you might have read some of his books, Vision of God, there are many volumes are available in our library also. I had the fortune to see that saint. He was in Karnataka. He has given a very graphic description of his uh, tour of India, where he encountered lots of uh, hardships. But how they all made him more and more strong, and his faith in Rama became more strong. So he has said that once he came to Calcutta, he went to Dakshineshwar, offered his salutations to Divine Mother and went to the room where Sri Ramakrishna lived. Even now that room is well preserved. When he went there, he found a remarkable purity 
he was inspired to such an extent he rolled on the floor there in great joy he felt immense peacefulness and joy and he expressed that i felt great joy in that room where shri ramakrishna lived and tears of joy were rolling forth through his eyes so that is the effect how the person make use of the place accordingly the vibrations one can feel when one goes there so the power and influence of pure thoughts do not vanish with time but even after centuries a place associated with a great saint exerts its immense divine influence and infuses into the hearts of visitors sublime thoughts and peace the places sanctified by shri ramachandra shri krishna buddha christ shri ramakrishna all these places even now draw several thousands of people and kindle in their hearts devotion and bliss ironically man forgets that it is he who makes a place holy or unholy so we can the dealt with the subject and said the difficulty with man is that he forgets the original meaning and puts the cart before the horse it was men who made these places holy and then the effect become the cause and made men holy if the wicked only were to go there it would become as bad as any other place it is not the building but the people that make a church and that is what we always forget that's why sages and holy persons who have much of the this sattva quality can send it out and exert a tremendous influence day and night on their surroundings a man may become so pure that his purity will become tangible whoever comes in contact with him becomes pure we have seen how when people would go and see ramana maharshi with so many doubts in their mind but when they go and sit in front of him for a few minutes even without asking any question all their doubts would have been solved they would go back with a kind of fulfillment and joy the presence of a saint makes the ferocious animals docile and cruel is gentle the sattvic vibrations emanating from the holy men are so strong that dishonesty untruth and violence tremble to face them the association of such holy men is joyous and elevating a few minutes talk with such holy people unburdens a great load of trouble and agony from the heart so our thoughts good or evil do not remain confined within our heads however we try once they have taken shape they spread out like particles into the outer space creating waves and ripples so you have to be careful what you think there they accumulate like condensed clouds and in their turn affect the minds of others 
who have seen how people become horrified at the mere mention of ruthless dictators who torture the people massacre the people because they were so ambitious about their power and position it is undeniable that they were the creation of the collective mass thought of humanity the ocean of destructive thoughts accumulated over the centuries found their expression in these despots mere thoughts are like tiny wavelets that at last combine into one giant wave that stands up and swallows up the rest the same logic holds good in the descent of messengers of god like lord christ buddha and shri ramakrishna the pious thoughts and prayers of the race found expression in the forms of these divine personalities the world was flooded with love and light by the red wind it is an inexorable law that what we want we get and what we desire depends entirely on our thoughts if the world sees the rise of tyrants people can't simply absolve themselves from their secret share and desire in inviting such calamities on earth these tyrants are the representatives of man's dark side his evil thoughts and the people are truthful righteous peace loving and feel that they belong to the global family surely they contribute to the fund of positive and auspicious thoughts that purify the atmosphere and make the world habitable generations born in such healthy joyful environment inherit these qualities and add their own share to enrich it that's the real cultural evolution from savage to discriminating man and then to man of kindness and love and finally to man divine all beings are here on this planet to unfold that latent cosmic intelligence the living beings have a kind of aura about them each one has got that the bio luminescence this aura glow changes its colors becomes dim sometimes becomes bright at other times according to one's thought patterns whatever you think in your mind accordingly the aura changes its colors seers and spiritually gifted holy people detect easily these auras that surround people it's a simple matter for them to know who is deceitful or wicked or a good person ordinary people though not having a developed ability to discern the spiritual auras of other people do occasionally have the flash of intuition enabling them to see into others character if you study the life of shri ramakrishna holy mother and great people you find ample evidence of this power working if anybody comes to visit shri ramakrishna immediately he would at a glance read the inner character of that man 
within seconds you would know everything about him like an open book shri ramakrishna said from the hand i can tell whether a person is deceitful or guileless whether a person is good or bad can also be known from the way he walks these are the words of shri ramakrishna he was very sensitive so greatly sensitive as he was to the environment around him he would experience excruciating pain whenever a person of uncertain character touched him sarada devi too receiving the salutations of all and sundry who came to her paying their homage by touching her feet she used to feel a burning sensation when people of impure character came and touched her feet this was due to the unsurpassed purity of the master and holy mother there is an interesting incident one day swami brahmananda ji one of the direct disciples of shri ramakrishna when he was young he used to come to shri ramakrishna one day he has come as soon as shri ramakrishna saw him he asked him why there was a shadow of darkness over his face have you done anything wrong the disciple was astonished in wonder because he couldn't remember to have done anything wrong but he began to think and rethink then finally he recollected he had told a lie in fun jokingly that's all the thing that he has done but even that shri ramakrishna could read that then he cautioned him don't tell a lie even in joke how many times we tell lies <laughs> see if you follow all these instructions meticulously then only you will, you will develop spiritual personality simply oh what i am i am i don't feel any progress in my life yeah you are not following the instructions properly it proves that but we do not have to tell that we shouldn't tell that oh you are not following so you are like you should not tell that because it may discourage you so you have to keep on telling you try 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 in so many other ways but if you are very sincere about your doing surely you will get the benefit there is no doubt about it shri ramakrishna is telling just he told a lie in a joke shri ramakrishna could see a shadow of darkness on his face in 1939 in russia the husband and wife team simon and valentin kirlian they provided a scientific proof with their invention of uh, high frequency photography the existence of auras around living beings a leaf torn from a tree was placed in a field of high frequency current 
it revealed a myriad dots of energy a human hand placed in the high frequency field looked like the milky way on a starry night multicolored flares lit up then flashes and sparks it looked like a fireworks display they saw in living things the signals of the inner state of the organism reflected in the brightness dimness and color of the flares they found these light hieroglyphics were the written records of the inner life activities of a human being so this russian couple they also detected that emotions illness worries and thoughts changed the colored signals of the flares all these make up distinctive imprints on the form of the aura so it's called kirlian technique it was successfully demonstrated in 1972 at manhattan's united engineering center by two scientists the kirlian photos also showed that some sort of energy flowed from psychic healers into the bodies of their patients human thoughts not only affect the human beings but other living things as well dr miller and the spin drift researchers of oregon in america they have demonstrated through their experiments that seeds planted irradiated with human goodwill and blessings showed 84% faster growth than the seeds planted without such human treatment of prayers and goodwill all this has been experimented another experiment was made there is a particular seed a grain similar to wheat it's called rye r y e so the seeds were divided into two groups of equal number they were placed in a shallow container filled with a group of uh, platy minerals a light soil like substance commonly used by gardeners a string was placed down the middle of the container dividing the seeds into sides a and b the seeds on one side they were prayed for and the others were not after the seeds had grown the slender rice shoots were counted results consistently indicated that there were more rice shoots in the treated that is prayed for that side they are more than in the control side this test was repeated many times they indicated that the effect of thought on living organisms outside the human body was significant quantifiable and reproducible and that the effects of human consciousness are not confined to the brain and body experiments were also conducted with striking success on unhealthy seeds and the results showed that human thought exerted a positive effect on them plants are very sensitive and their high tough sensitivity is much superior to human senses 
another scientist his name clean baxter the foremost lie detector of america in 1966 he startled the world of science by a repeatedly successful experiment in lie detection which he made with a plant what did he do the plant was connected with the galvanometer a galvanometer's needle moves when a weak electric current passes through the body of the machine the needle or pen of the galvanometer which was connected to the plant traced various kinds of curves in response to the mental changes or the slightest surge of emotion in the person standing in front of the plant the plant showed its reactions like a human being it reached when a man with a lighted match stick approached the plant to burn it or when a ferocious dog suddenly appeared in the room or when there was an entrance of a person who did not wish it well the plant even displayed memory by identifying from a distance a certain culprit this book was written by swami jitatmananda the head of the uh, gujarat rajkot center so what we should remember is thought is not confined to one's own brain and body it travels and acts upon whatever it is directed and projected our good wishes sincere prayers otherwise have no significance the same truth holds good that the evil thoughts born out of ill will do sufficient harm to others thoughts of greed hatred are terrible they are vicious forces but it is also the law of nature that whatever one sends out comes back to him with redoubled energy sinful thoughts what they do they pollute the atmosphere then it won't stop they come back to the sender with great force which he cannot escape a wicked person therefore not only harms himself but invites calamity on himself the evil forces let loose by a person come back to him with all vehemence and destroy him so finally it destroys a person from where it has come auspicious compassionate and loving thoughts set out for the good of others they purify the atmosphere and they also come back to the sender the power of good packed in them suffuses the sender with peace and joy and protect him from the invisible inimical forces that are lurking in the atmosphere so vivekananda said every thought of love sent out by us is sure to awaken a thought of love in response so too with every unloving thought evil thoughts attract their own way of uh, affecting the people thoughts of love and kindness draw the same thoughts from the atmosphere 
Swami Vivekananda said that the easiest way to make ourselves healthy is to see others are healthy. And the easiest way to make ourselves happy is to see others are happy. So that is why when people in distress, when their minds get confused, when they find whatever the drugs they might take, were ineffective. Finally, they begin to search of a holy man to see whether they could be helped. When they come to the holy man, because his power of thought is so strong, it has got tremendous burning power. It burns all the impurities of the persons who come to him. And then he places in their minds fresh thoughts. That is the idea of giving the mantra giving the divine name, charged with the power of the divine. So when the Guru initiates a person, all the impurities of the person are taken out, are burnt, are washed away by the performance of worship. And then, when the soil is cleaned, the mantra is given. And then that works tremendously well. But then, the disciple should be sincere enough to practice. should be careful enough to see that no evil thoughts are being welcomed in his mind anymore. One way of preventing bad thoughts is to engage the mind in good thoughts. That's why I always suggest every day spend some time in reading a good book which inspires your life, which gives an awakening to your spiritual unfoldment. By doing this way, positively you are encouraging the pure thoughts in your mind to come up and preventing the bad thoughts acting upon. So this purification of the thought is very important. To what level we rise depends upon the level of the purity of our heart. So the purpose of all spiritual sadhana is to purify the mind. What is the meaning of purifying the mind? Make the mind free from all evil thoughts. So let us try to take the teachings of holy people and try to practice them sincerely. In that process, you will be purifying yourself. You are not only helping yourself, but you are helping the society, you are helping the people in the world. So they are very powerful, they influence the people who come around you. 
that's why the power of good thoughts is so intense and it is so effective in a place of worship where people offer everyday prayers and do meditation so every day of your life you must think properly think always pure noble thoughts that's the way to organize yourself to discipline yourself and that's the way that we should proceed in our spiritual path with these words i conclude my talk sahana bhavato sahano bhunakto sah viryam karavavahai tejasvinavadhitamastu ma vid vishavahai om shanti 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 hari om may the divine supreme protect us may he nourish us may we work in harmony with great vigor may our study be illuminating and fruitful may we not hate each other may we live in peace and harmony peace 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 be unto all